All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to participate in this wonderful um, workshop. Uh, so this work uh, was done uh, in collaboration with Mark and also some collaborators at University of Montreal. And um, uh, we, in fact, at the last workshop, we, we went away with the to-do list, what, which was to try to implement the MetaGGA formalism in Adam PAW. Uh, the first step would be to, to modify our uh, uh, all electron atomic solver to, to accommodate the MetaGGA form, and then to do the pseudization and test. We thought it would take a few months, of course, <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, but before I go into to the details, I, I just want to, to make a comment about the motivation. Uh, we've heard a lot of nice things about extensions of density functional theory, but density functional theory itself has improved, uh, thanks, and thanks to the LibXC effort, it's relatively easy to implement uh, uh, these new functionals, as Mark was describing. Uh, now, the meta-GGA functional, which uh, adds the kinetic energy density into the form, uh, um, in order to, it seems to be the consensus that in order to, to realize the improvements uh, that this, this idea uh, provides, it's better to use the so-called um, uh, generalized de density functional theory, which is, as Mark described causes a few more uh, wrinkles to the formalism. Now, one of the main motivations of this work was the scan functional, which was introduced in 2015 and was shown to show, to, to improve the prediction properties of a lot of material systems, which is, which is indeed what we want to do, right? <laughs> and uh, this paper has almost a thousand citations and has shown a lot of success. But if there's always a but, uh, if you look into the details, the successes are mainly reported with uh, calculations that use localized beta, uh, basis sets or um, use the VAST code, which I, in my opinion, must be using a somewhat modified version of the scan functional. Several authors have noted that there are some very serious uh, numerical issues with the scan functional, and Bartok and Yates introduced a modified version, which they called R scan, that solved some of them. But when we looked into it, we, for an atom, what we realized was that for an atom, the scan functional actually diverges in regions of space where the radial density is, is very small. And this was a problem in my opinion. However, um, last fall, I think it was, uh, the, the developers of the scan functional um, worked hard uh, to revise that functional into the R2 scan uh, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, if you take a textbook uh, form of the density, this is uh, from a quantum mechanics, uh, an old quantum mechanics book, uh, which shows a, a exponential decay of the density and, and also the kinetic energy density, uh, you see that it is relatively, this is the exchange correlation functional times R predicted by putting that density into the uh, meta -G GGA scan functional, you see that it actually goes to infinity as R goes to large, far from the atom. And uh, so, I thought that was very serious and, and we stopped working on, on this project. But when the R2 scan was developed, this problem was, and, and the other 
uh, Mark told you about uh, the form of the, extend, uh, the exchange correlation functional. It depends on the kinetic energy, and this introduces uh, this dimensionless kinetic potential that we call it, uh, that comes into the kinetic energy solver uh, a differential equation. And the question is, how can we implement that? Uh, and uh, so we're implementing it for an atom with spherical symmetry. And this is the form of the differential equation uh, that we have to solve that now has uh, some extra terms there. And then, um, so how do we do that? Uh, there are several methods that, um, um, uh, am I still connected? <laughs> Just to make sure. Yes? Yes, yes, you, are. You, are. You, are yes you are. Yes, Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is a, a second order, uh, um, two couple differential equations, or we can transform the equations. We, we have implemented uh, this form in Adam PAW. Uh, in both of these cases, you see that the differential equation is highly sensitive to the form of this kinetic energy, uh, kinetic potential here. Um, and one more point is that uh, in the when we were doing this, we had trouble um, uh, uh, implementing it, uh, uh, and so we contacted uh, the scan R two scan group, and uh, they mentioned that there was one parameter that we could perhaps change, uh, and so they originally had eta equal to uh, one point uh, oh one, and we made it a little bit bigger to make the numerics a little bit more controlled. Uh, how much difference does this make? Uh, this is an example for a convert calculation of sulfur, the kinetic energy um, potential and the exchange correlation potential, they uh, differ with uh, only in the uh, region far from the atom there. Uh, so we finally got the equation to, to the, the uh, solver to work. And here is uh, some results for the second row of the periodic table from boron to neon and the third row from aluminum to argon. This kinetic potential this is dimensionless and is very small, usually not more than 0.2 uh, throughout the periodic table that we've tried so far. Uh, this is uh, the corresponding results for the exchange correlation functional uh, across the periodic table from boron to neon and aluminum to argon, again, showing some systematic behavior across the periodic table. Um, so when we, um, it, this is a summary of some of the results that we got from our calculations. Um, uh, these empty spaces show that for the eta equal to 0 0.001, we're still unable to converge the calculation for certain atoms. But for the eta equal 0.01, it seems to work for most that we've tried so far. Uh, you might ask the question, how does this compare between LDA and GGA? And uh, um, uh, this is the exchange correlation function multiplied by R for the LDA and GGA and the R2 scan. And you see that the R2 scan has a lot more structure near the regions of space where the density and the kinetic energy density are very large. But in the region where we uh, focus our attention for the pseudopotentials, everything is a little more smooth. So it looked like uh, we could go ahead and, and try the pseudization. So the pseudization depends on uh, the frozen core approximation. Uh, we, we divide the electrons into core and valence electrons and make pseudized versions of both of them using different methods. Uh, for the core functions here, we're using a very simple polynomial uh, matching uh, there. And uh, uh, for the valence electrons, we use different techniques, but again, try to make very nice smooth uh, functions instead of the all electron uh, densities and kinetic energy densities. For this choice for silicon, this 
is the comparison of the all electron in blue and the red is the pseudo um, kinetic potential. And uh, correspondingly for the exchange uh, correlation functional, it is also somewhat smooth, um, has a little more structure, but hopefully uh, it will converge without too large a plane wave cutoff. So what we need to do is update the Adam P Paul code uh, with all of this. Uh, and uh, uh, now Mark Tarrant has a very nice um, uh, document that describes all the options for how do you do the pseudoization. Not all of them will work with the generalized um, density functional scheme. Uh, this is a slightly modified version of, of one of the schemes that already exists in the list. Um, and uh, for that choice, using the same choice for LDA, GGA, and R2 scan, you can see that the ionic potential that comes from unscreening the design pseudopotential uh, it, uh, are quite similar in, in the LDA, GGA, and R2 scan there. So uh, we're hopeful uh, that this will be useful. Uh, in terms of the to-do list, uh, we believe we've sort of more or less conquered the self-consistency hurdle um, for the meta-GGA form. Uh, we've adapted some of the pseudization schemes and we're looking forward to the testing. Um, and of course, the main question is how sensitive are the results in the old days, we would never think of using a data set that wasn't constructed specifically for our exchange correlation functional. So uh, perhaps now we'll be able to see that and hopefully it will live up to our expectations. And then uh, there are some details that I would appreciate your feedback on. Uh, at the moment, uh, we can only get uh, most of the atoms to work for the modified R2 scan functional. Um, do we need to work harder or uh, can we use this modified version? And also not all the pseudization schemes have been converted and I would like your feedback if you're interested in what schemes uh, do we need to try to implement further. And thank you for your attention and I'm so sorry. <laughs> about the Zoom. I had no, I actually didn't know I, I was talking to myself for a while. <laughs> Thank you very much, Natalie. But I think uh, I think um, we have understand your point. And so uh, these are the, the problems with, uh, with technical problems that may happen. Uh, I have a, um, a very a question from Xavier for the other uh, meta GGA functionals, does such uh, nice work need to be done? Uh, well, um, our solver doesn't work for all the meta GGA functionals either. It doesn't work at all for, for the original scan. And the, so far the TPSS doesn't seem to converge either. So I don't know whether we need to work harder on the solver or, or whether this is an interest, uh, whether whether it's worth it or not. Uh, I, I, we were focusing our attention on the R2 scan form, but I'd like your feedback on that. Okay, and the, um, the atom pool code uh, is completely, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, works uh, completely with, uh, meta uh, with this uh, shame, so we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can use it now. Well, it hasn't been committed yet. It or merged. Uh, I need to to work with Mark in order to to do that. Okay. Uh, another question from Michelle. Uh, do we know a larger uh, E cut for the R two scan, and how much larger? <laughs> well, we haven't tested it yet, <laughs> so that will be. Uh, when we get it to work with Abinet, it, it we haven't quite gotten it to the step that we've interfaced it with Abinet. I think 
I need to work with Mark and, and Michelle to, to get that finalized before we know that. Hmm. I know that the next uh, table, the next uh, GTH table, will have uh, the ingredients for Meta GGA, I think. So the, the test will be possible uh, soon. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> Uh, Mark uh, is asking a question to everybody. Is it expected to be larger than for, than for scan, the cutoff? Well, I, I don't, I, I, I am done with scan. I mean, I think scan is, <laughs> is not, it has so many numerical problems that we shouldn't even use it. That's my opinion. <laughs> Okay. So I'm thinking R2 scan replaces scan. That's my opinion. Justified. 